All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the BISC growth brief briefing for 2020 quarter one. I'd like to largely discuss the post I made last week on GitHub discussions on the approach that we'd like to take to uh, boost volume and grow the BISC network in the near future. Um, most critically, I'd like to add some, some process and coordination details to the higher level concepts that I put forth in that, in that post. And uh, also to ask your, for your feedback on any, um, on any of the items that we mentioned. So first off, I'm not gonna be high level at all. I just wanna start off with this one slide uh, on a vision, uh, kind of stealing one of the items that Chris mentioned on his original call uh, about two weeks ago on uh, from the, the quarter quarter one 2020 update. The vision, why are we here? I think we all have our reasons. Uh, there's probably lots of aspects of this project that everyone on this call likes in particular. Um, I just wanna highlight this one, uh, one item of this becoming the widely accepted exchange layer of Bitcoin and how enormous of an opportunity that really is. Uh, I was just looking at some numbers earlier and Binance, just Binance does about $45 billion of volume or did $45 billion of volume in just the past 30 days. Now, obviously BISC is very different. We're not gonna be doing that kind of volume or anything close in the near future. But the reason I bring this up is just to highlight how massive of a market this is and how much opportunity there is and really how exciting growth itself, the growth function in this project can really be. So with that said, what is our goal? It's very simple. We want to hit 2100 Bitcoin of volume uh, per month. This is a number that will make BISC minimally sustainable. Um, it's not that we hit this number and we're, we're good. We wanna hit this number as a minimum and of course uh, uh, move beyond that as much as possible. But this is the minimum we need based on the spending, the minimal spending that we're doing now. So the budget uh, that we're on right now is kind of a minimally sustainable budget of just the minimum we need to do to get by and achieve our goals. And this volume number will, uh, will allow us to be sustainable with the current budget. Um, I really wanted to add a time frame here. When do you want to achieve this by? But I didn't, um, mainly because, well, number one, it's a, a, a goal to sustain this volume. So what do we want to, do we want to sustain this volume over, how do we measure that? Do we want to sustain it over three months, six months, 12 months? it's only after we reach the end of this period of sustainability that we're gonna know whether we hit the goal or not. So it didn't really make too much sense to specify that. Um, and also we just wanna do it as soon as possible. So um, that's, that's the, uh, the high level goal. Um, and I wanna just highlight also that we've hit this goal already. So this is not like pie in the sky, you know, never done this before, gonna have to figure out a way to do it for the first time. Um, BISC has already surpassed 2100 Bitcoin on a couple of occasions you can see from this graph. And um, that was without, really without any intentional efforts on our part. And uh, so I think if we put our heads together and follow a strategic, consistent, plan and execute on that plan, uh, we should begin to see some more consistent and strong results. So practically, how is this going to happen? Um, in a nutshell, we, we need to incentivize supply and demand. It's a supply and demand problem. Um, we, on the supply side, we need to make sure that we attract and engage market makers to keep a, an attractive offer book in key markets. So on BISC at the moment, that means US dollar, the Euro and Monero need to have 
rock solid offer books. Um, and then on the demand side, we need to make sure that uh, people are actually there to take those offers. And so that we're, that we're in the community engaging people to, uh, to try BISC, maybe try it again if they tried it in the past or to try it for the first time if they haven't yet. And yeah, so that's it. Uh, basically supply demand, but what does that really mean? Well, in terms of market making, like I mentioned, we need to focus on key markets, US dollar, Euro and Monero. Um, primarily through, when I say good bets, determine good bets, what I'm referring to are market making bounties. Um, so, you know, putting up some kind of a goal or some kind of a, a target for a market maker to put up a certain number of offers uh, of a certain type for a certain amount of time. We've already done this. We've actually been doing this. Uh, Felix, uh, I'm not sure if he's on the call, but has, has been a, the primary driver of these bounties in the past and, 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 and lately as well. Um, but so far it's kind of been a one man band. It's been like him making a proposal in the growth repository on GitHub. Um, and they're quite complete. There's always a good reason for them. Um, and, and there's always a, uh, some kind of a requirement in the bounty to uh, specify some kind of marketing effort, some kind of reporting accountability um, to go along with the market making bounty itself. But these efforts have not really been integrated with the rest of the project very well in terms of uh, any kind of marketing or publicity efforts, integration with social channels, the blog, things like that. And I think going forward, we, gotta, we have to make sure that, that that's not the case, that we do, at least for the, the, the markets that we're focusing on, the key markets, that these bounties are better integrated and more comprehensive. Um, and of course, we can, I, I think it's, it's, it's still important, I think, to maintain some number of speculative bounties um, for example, I was speaking to a couple of folks over the weekend about the Argentina markets. Uh, Bitcoin trading there is apparently very strong right now through Facebook groups in particular. Um, and a lot of people have told me that the BISC would be a great fit there uh, just to help with the, the trust problem and, you know, um, provide folks with more privacy and security instead of a lack of privacy and security that they're probably getting on Facebook. Um, and so I think it makes sense to maintain some number of speculative bounties without that full backing. Um, but I think we need to determine which, like we need to prioritize which uh, of these less, prior, less high priority bounties are we going to uh, want to focus on and, um, and make it clear which ones we're willing to fund and which ones we're not. So I guess going back to what I have here, yeah, we have to make sure that we focus on key markets, promote and evaluate and adapt bounties as we try them. What I mean by data doesn't say everything um, is in terms of determining what bounty, how bounties should actually be structured. Um, if you look at the data for key markets, like for example, Monero, you'll see that the vast majority of trades that have happened in the past are for one or two Bitcoin Monero trades, the trade size is either one or two Bitcoin for Monero, for Monero trades. Um, it's, I don't have the percentage off uh, here offhand, but it's a huge percentage. The overwhelming majority were one or two Bitcoin trades. But if you go to uh, some of the Monero channels, the Telegram and the Reddit, you'll see that uh, a lot of traders, a lot of uh, folks who want to buy Monero complain that BISC does not have enough smaller offers. Um, and so this is where I think the community engagement that we need to do more of will, will help fill the gaps in uh, to make BISC more attractive to some, some of the less served demographics in our key markets. So. I guess I mentioned that as 
for folks on the call who are interested in market making, whether you are a market maker or if you are looking to help with promotion and evaluation efforts for, um, for market making, um, look at the data, yes, but also pay attention to the community and see what they're looking for, for more ideas on how we can do it better. And then the last item, branding. Um, this is something that uh, we need to figure out as well. What I mean here is this has a reputation for privacy has a reputation for being very Bitcoin centric. It is a Bitcoin exchange. Every trade on, on BISC is a Bitcoin trade. Um, but we have, uh, for example, right now, we have a couple of ongoing bounties for Ethereum and Litecoin trades. And it's kind of hard to promote those bounties by, uh, within the kind of reputation that BISC has. And so, we need to figure out a way to promote bounties that, that don't necessarily fit BISC's um, uh, best known reputation, um, but still promote them um, in a way that gets them traction and makes them successful bounties. So uh, that's just, I guess, an open question that needs to be figured out. How are we gonna handle this? Are we gonna handle this or are we going to um, focus on key markets only in fiat and privacy coins. Open question there. Um, as far as actions go, um, we need to promote, propose smart bounties in key markets. So like I said, that's either through data, looking at the data to see which kinds of trades, what are uh, the most successful attributes of trades in terms of trade sizes, spreads, payment methods, and um, propose market market making bounties um, along those lines or look at community questions demands suggestions basically see what the people want and propose bounties that way um, and then in addition to that the flip side suggest approaches for promoting these bounties which ties into the next aspect of growth which is community engagement um, in a nutshell, we have to be better at following the key channels that BISC is, is on, that people talk about BISC on, the Bitcoin channels uh, and Monero channels in particular, and proactively guide those conversations. So following what people are saying and responding, reacting, and also proactively managing and guiding where it makes sense. I think that's something that we've been, oh, just sorry, looking at the chat, missed a couple messages. Um, yeah, that's something that I think we've been missing a lot. Um, we have people who do this on a kind of opportunistic basis as they can, but I think really proactively, not only following, but you know, talking about the, um, the new features that are added just with like, merges every now and then every now and then there's a there's a there's a an important merge that's never talked about that's never mentioned and i think that could be done better i think um key aspects of you know of, of the way the software works as far as account signing uh instant trades um backing up your account backing up particular aspects of your account these are things that yeah, they might be documented, they might not be, but these are things that people ask about a lot that they're interested in that, uh, that, they should, that, that should be broken down and made more simple. And um, maybe these things will attract people or entice people to use BISC if they haven't used it in a while. Um, so yeah, as far as actions, how do we wanna actually, actually do this? Um, so I've spoken with a couple of people, I think some of whom are on this call. We want to designate ambassadors to follow and manage key channels. Um, ambassador is, is just the name I have now. I'm not sure what we'll call them, um, but ambassadors will, is what we'll go with for now. Um, so I think right now it'll be me. Uh, we have Ricardo on the call as well as M with M to um, all of whom have experience, by the way. I think M with M has been doing the um, 
managing the Spanish Bisque Twitter account for uh, at least a couple of months, if not longer now. And I believe Ricardo has experience managing the Wasabi Wallet Twitter account, which is uh, an account that I actually use as a benchmark. I think it's a really well-managed account. And he's put on some campaigns like the, um, the antivirus campaign that they had uh, a little while ago, which uh, seemed to get decent traction and I think was a, was a good idea. So um, the three of us, we'll, we're going to talk more uh, after this call, but basically we're going we're gonna to follow the, these key channels across Reddit, across Twitter, the BISC forum, the Telegram groups possibly the IRC and matrix. I'm not sure if those are worth uh, dedicating time to, but anyway, um, and, and respond where it makes sense. But, but most importantly, take note of the important questions, topics, and mentions that come up in those channels and put them in this new Pulse Keybase group that uh, was created a little while ago. The idea here being that there's a lot of stuff going on across a lot of different channels. And unless you follow all of these channels, you're not going to know what's happening. So when we aggregate all of the notable items from these channels in one place, then we can just go to that one place, that Pulse channel, and just at one glance see, okay, what are people talking about? What are people concerned about? What should we address? And then we can use that as a springboard to create content, videos, documentation, wiki articles, infographics, whatever, articles, blog posts, to, uh, to address these topics, create consistent messaging, and then push that content out throughout the channels that we're each responsible for. I think that's going to be very helpful. Um, let me just check to see if I'm missing anything. Yeah. Got it. Right. And so, right, as I mentioned, I, right now it's going to be it, it's going to be me, M with M, and Ricardo to do these this uh, sort of ambassador role. Um, content people, we have, I think, a good a good group of people. We have evoked uh, Amin, who I, th I think is on the call right now. Um, Pedro, our designer, me, uh, Manuel, who's written a number of, of great articles on Bitcoin in the past, um, as well as anyone else who's listening who would like to uh, help with this effort. Creating content like the kinds of content that I mentioned is going to be very important, but also just like simpler stuff like cutting videos. Um, we have a lot of calls like this one, which are relatively long, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour plus sometimes which I think would be great to cut up so that we can uh, tweet them in smaller bite-sized segments that people can actually listen to. Um, that's just an idea that I just thought of, but um, yeah, if, if you at all have any kind of experience in writing or producing video or graphics or anything like that, then please um, get in touch. I think we have a good team right now, but we can always certainly use more people. Um, as we move forward. In terms of other, I just want to quickly mention dark horses. These are items, the, the API and the mobile app, these are items that I think will possibly make game-changing growth, but, or at least result in, 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 in much uh, kind of game-changing growth, but um, we don't have them at the moment, can't rely on them. Um, being there right now, but hopefully they come about soon and we're able to use those for uh, weave them into growth efforts in the future. But potentially exciting developments down the road. In terms of everything else, uh, particularly translations and website, uh, website efforts, I want to just mention before I get into some of the coordination and process oriented items for the concepts we just discussed. I want to just say uh, translations and website are pretty much on maintenance mode. If you want to contribute something, yeah, someone's mic is on. 
Um, if you want to contribute something to either of these things, to either of these, these, uh, uh, these functions, um, please first run your idea by. Um, so for the website, make an issue before you make a pull request. For translations, please first make a suggestion on the translations Kanban board. I'll be talking more about Kanban boards in a second, but uh, it's basically a way to organize things that are, you know, a to-do list, a currently doing list, and a done list to basically see where a particular function stands, what needs to be done and what's going on right now. Um, this uh, Kanban board for translations still needs to be figured out. I mean, it's, uh, I, I made one, earlier, but it didn't quite work out. Details on that will come uh, shortly, but uh, just for the moment, uh, make sure you run by any suggested contributions by the TransFX channel before you start working on it. And for the website, uh, please make issues first um, so that we can evaluate whether or not the initiative falls within the budget. And um, then you can go forward if it makes sense and actually make a pull request. In terms of process, uh, I talked a little bit about this. How do we actually want to achieve all this? Um, I mentioned the Pulse Keybase channel. Um, the idea is that, again, we collect all these uh, insights and findings on the Pulse Keybase channel. Um, and then we have Kanban boards for growth. Well, one for growth, one for translations, and possibly one for, um, for bounties. Although I think that might, might be better to have that combined with the growth, the growth board. But um, the idea is that we take, as we add items to Pulse, the Pulse Keybase channel, we actively think of what are things we could do? What are campaigns we could put on to address the trends that are showing up in Pulse? And once you have an idea, once you have an idea, you make a suggestion on the Kanban board for, hey, this is a campaign that we should do that we should carry out two weeks from now, three weeks from now, next week, whatever. And then every week we evaluate these suggestions and we determine, okay, it makes sense to do whatever. Like it, make, it makes sense to talk about account signing next week. And so we plan content around that campaign and, and, figure out what needs to be done to make that campaign happen. What I want this to be is I want this to be as asynchronous as possible. I would, I would, I want to stay away from having like, I mean, we, we will need to have some amount of some number of meetings on a regular basis, probably every other week, uh, some kind of a call to, uh, get people together and talk about what happened in Bisc land, what happened, what's happening in, in Bitcoin, what's happening. Uh, in various areas, cross channels. But for this particular process, I'd like it to be as uh, continuous as possible. So Pulse, as you find stuff, post it there. Um, for the suggestions on these, on these Kanban boards, as you think of stuff, post it there. And then on Thursdays at, a, at around, around this time, uh, we can post the top suggestions from this, this, this board on the growth chat in Keybase and folks can just vote, maybe have the next one day to vote on what campaign should be, uh, should be chosen for the following week. Whichever idea wins, people make suggestions on which content they'd like to create. create that content over the next week and carry out the campaign the following week. So just to see how this looks. So this is the headline for the Pulse channel. Uh, I've put a number of categories just to make it easier when you see the channel, what category does each link fall under just to get an idea of, uh, just a better idea of the kind of, uh, kind of stuff that's happening. 
Kanban board, for those of you who haven't seen before, this is the very high level animation of how it looks. There's different Kanban boards you can use. Uh, the GitHub boards is the one I wanted to use, but I don't think the permissions there are gonna work out in a way that makes sense for us. So we might have to look elsewhere, um, but I think that should be okay because translations and growth efforts typically are not tied to code. And so I don't know if it, I, I think it'd be fine to, to use an external tool. Um, yeah, so this, this covers the process that I just mentioned. Uh, every Thursday, we take stock of the suggestions that we've come up with, the findings that we've, that we've discovered, and uh, decide on a campaign and start producing content for the winning ideas. So as far as moving forward, what to do now? Um, like I mentioned, we have key people for, uh, for these functions already picked out for the, for, for the content. We've uh, I've spoken to a, a handful of people for the uh, community engagement. We've gotten a small team together for that as well. But if you are watching this call right now, or if you are watching it later on, on YouTube and would like to become involved, um, indicate your interest in growth or send me a message, m 5 to go on Keybase. And um, invites to the Kanban boards will be out soon. Uh, if, to those who are on this call and who, who indicate their interest. Um, and we'll have our first weekly evaluation on Thursday to go through uh, ideas that are, that are currently in, in, um, in discussion for, uh, for future campaigns. And, and get this rolling. Uh, yeah, anybody, anybody have any questions? That's all I have. Let me just go through the chat to see what was talked about while I was talking. Most of our potential users are on channels that we haven't seriously explored yet. Ricardo, what do you mean by that? Okay, you also said that Bitcoin Twitter already knows this. We should focus on Telegram groups, Facebook groups, Reddit. I agree with that. And I think we've, as a project, maybe over, over focused on Twitter, maybe not over focused, but focused on Twitter to the expense of these other, other channels. And that will change. Uh, if I may. Hi. How you doing? Um, if there's feedback on my microphone, please do let me know. Uh, yeah, I just want to say great job on the presentation. Uh, pretty straightforward what needs to be done. Uh, just want to say yeah, thanks for taking the time to do that. And I will reach out because there's a few things here yeah, that I could definitely contribute to. That's all I really wanted to say. Cheers. Appreciate it. Thank you for, uh, for joining and thanks for your, uh, yeah, you're uh, looking forward to, uh, to, your, uh, to working with you. Cheers, mate. Let me just look through some of these other comments. Steve, just ping me afterward to talk about um, permissions and GitHub project boards and Kanban stuff, okay? Sure. Ian, you raised your hand. Please feel free to speak. Uh, hey, Steve, hey all. Hey. Yeah, yeah thanks for the uh, great presentation. One thing I wanted to um, ask about or maybe suggest is, um, so the new version of BISC is going to uh, contain the technology to trade LBTC. And um, right. I think that that's a fantastic opportunity, growth opportunity for BISC that hasn't really been discussed at all. And I would love to see people talk about all the pros and cons of how that can improve your privacy. 
because at least from my perspective, taking some BISC that let's say, or sorry, taking some Bitcoin that's let's say from of mine from a KYC exchange, trading it into LBTC, and then taking that LBTC and trading it again on BISC back to Bitcoin. As far as I'm concerned, that washes away, you know, my name connection to that Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, there may be some, it's not a completely confidential asset. Not that I necessarily believe that XMR, that Monero is, um, but that's, you know, what people are kind of using it for, you know, crossing through BISC to kind of cut all ties. Um, and so I see LBTC as a superior way to do that because you don't have any price risk. And so not only for the user, you know, you're just trading an LBTC for a Bitcoin. And I mean, maybe you have some risk that like liquid, you know, shuts down while you're, you know, while you're switching. But I mean, as a trader of Monero, I've, you know, I've had times where I bought some Monero and it fell 10%, you know, so as a market maker, I have to charge a much bigger premium to, my, yeah. you know, to make it worth my while. Now, uh, or, you know, I'm sorry, you know, to profit or to at least mitigate my risk. LBTC, you know, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's basically as good as Bitcoin. You know, I mean, not quite. It's it's a second class, third class citizen, but it's not a completely different asset. So yeah, I mean, just maybe you can discuss that, or any other people want to respond to what I said. Yeah, sure. I appreciate that, and that's that's a great point. I think um, no, I, I, I honestly I didn't I didn't quite understand the the the, the value in LBTC until recently, but. Yeah, I think as a, um, or at least as as a LBTC as a, as an asset on BISC, but um, yeah, I mean it totally makes sense as a as a a privacy uh, tool, and maybe it's something that we could we could make a campaign on, and and focus on once it's uh, once it's once it's trading on BISC. Yeah, I mean, I just I see that as a huge, huge bonus for the users because, um, you know, the the connections. Let's say you have KYC Bitcoin, or you know, it's somehow connected to you. Um, there are some concerns about where that goes, and you know, especially when you are when it is going through BISC. If you trade, you know, um, I, I personally don't do any uh, any chain analysis, so I don't know. You know, but I, there are, you know, there's, there are rumors that some people have had, you know, problems depositing coins um, that, you know, touched certain surfaces, maybe not this, but, you know, other ones. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, going through something like LBTC, breaking all those links, to me, that seems just like a great, a great way to do. That. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it's perfectly on brand. So it's like, I mean, it's, yeah, I think it's, it should be a top priority for sure. Actually, with the with the release happening today or tomorrow, we should uh, we should maybe we can make it the topic of a campaign next week. And really, uh, yeah, really push it. Yeah, and I think we already did a way, at least in my opinion, a way to generate a lot of fees for Bisc. Yeah, oh, for because sure. Because yeah. that's you know, um, at least from my perspective. As a trader and a Bitcoin, you know, hodler, um, there's a bunch of stuff that maybe I have on a hardware wallet that came off an exchange, and it would just be nice to completely, you know, and th that's why I'd love to see a debate because I'm not sure, you know, I don't know the, all the pros and cons of how much privacy I'm going to gain. I see it as gaining quite a bit, though. Maybe it's not. Um, maybe someone would, you know, could point out that um, it's not. You're not really improving that much, but I would see it as like. All of a sudden, those those just aren't attached to my name anymore. And for me, that would be, you know, just increasing my privacy. That would be a good thing, and something I'd be willing to pay something for. Not a ton, but right. you know, maybe Bitcoin or maybe Bisc fees. You know. Yeah, for sure. Eminem, were you saying something? Yes, yes, sorry. Ah. Uh, I read a tweet about LBTC with an article, a press article, and it they liked it. They liked it. 
it just say that the LBTC is coming. What, this was in uh, an article? Yes, a, a, press, a press notice uh, from another media. The mm -hmm. article was quite good. And in the tweet, I just say that uh, LBTC is coming to BISC. Oh, um, OK. Oh, awesome. I, I got a, a good news uh, article, mm. uh, a good one, and made it a tweet, and they liked it. Awesome. So I, I made a little of uh, explaining what's also educating people about Bitcoin, not only uh, saying this is weight. You know, I try to do this with, with, with the Twitter account. I try to um, make Bitcoin more known, not only BISC. Yeah, Good that's... practices and all, all this. I appreciate that. You, you seem quite savvy with the, with the Twitter. You got that uh, Economist retweet, like a last, was it last week or two weeks ago? Yes. Yes, it was a simple article against, uh, who is that one? Uh, Stiglitz, yes. Uh, Stiglitz, who said yeah. that, what did he say? Um, something against Bitcoin. And well, uh, and he's an Austrian economist, one of, in, in, in Spain, in Spanish, maybe the most important. And he liked it and retweeted it. So it, it was great for the account. It was great. Awesome. Okay, so Ricardo's asking, what do you think of investing XBSQ per month in video influencer marketing on YouTube? Each ambassador by country chooses the first 10 crypto YouTubers and influencers, and then the DAO votes whether to allocate BSQ or not. It's a good question. I was talking to, might have been evoked actually, that we were talking about, I think we were talking about YouTube influencer marketing and didn't get a great impression about it. So I'd be curious to learn more about the potential effect of that and what, 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 what we can expect to get out of such an expenditure. Initial impressions are, it seems that there might be more effective ways to do influencer marketing but we can talk about it okay any any other uh, any other questions yeah I, I guess i'm ricardo uh it, it could be a good strategy as uh, users trust their uh, favorite youtubers so we can ask uh, youtubers to make a video about uh, this trading on uh, how to, to trade on this and then the, the dao vote and pay them Oh, so you're suggesting for for us to make our own videos? No, I'm I'm saying that uh, yeah, I, I think that we should invest uh, uh, X BSQ uh, per month on uh, YouTubers. Okay. Yeah, well, we can certainly look into it. I mean, YouTube is huge. There's no question. Second biggest search engine something like that. All right. So yes, we'll have boards established soon. We'll have the first weekly evaluation on Thursday in the growth Keybase channel around this time. Um, and if, yeah, if you're interested in any of these initiatives, please drop by the growth channel and make it known and yeah we'll get started thank you guys for joining